Okay, well, good evening, everyone. And, uh, you know, it's still, at least here, it's a few hours until the Sabbath begins. But uh, I wish you a happy Sabbath, and we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for the time that we have to study here this evening and to look at things that you have presented to us over the past week and try to bring them all together. And so we just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts. We ask for forgiveness for our sins, for the times that we doubt you. Um, and we pray, Lord, that um, you can um, use us to your glory. Be with each person and work in their lives is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry about the noise there. <clears throat> well, good evening, and um, you see in, in front of you some charts. I'm, I'm going to try to draw some of this out, and um, so I don't really want to start with this chart, though I will come back to it. So we're going to go to the whiteboard here, and... Now, one of the things that I first want to look at is, because we're dealing with 2030, and we have all of, the, of these symbols, and some of them we're very familiar with, some we're less familiar with. Um, but this, to me, is an important symbol, February 16th. This is going to be in 1844. And we have here January 1st, 1844. What's the significance of this date for Samuel Snow? Does anyone know? Now I changed the microphone here. I'm not recalling it quickly. Now, does this microphone sound better here than the other one? Yeah, it does. It's coming through better, yes. Okay. Yeah, because this is the one on the camera, which is just a couple feet from me. So this is when Samuel Snow first decides that he's going to present his view that Jesus is coming back in the fall of 1844, that that's when the prophetic periods end. Now, of course, we know it's a symbol of the first day of the first month. Right on, on being the Gregorian date, January 1st. Right. Um, so this is really in 1844. This is when snow is going to begin. He's going to begin on the first day of the first month. And of course, we know that this comes from Ezra. That's going to go from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month. So this becomes an important symbol. Now, the number of days from January 1st to February 16th is 46 days. And of course, that's an important symbol because we're going to be dealing with the 46 years from 1798 to 1844. They're sort of symbolized in here. Now, we also have February 16th as another date. That is, we have 1798. And what happens on February 16th, 1798? Or not, seven, yeah, 1798. So I'm going to put here 1798. So the Pope be... is taken captive by Berthier. Yeah, so you're going to have the Pope being taken captive by Berthier. And so you're going to have this symbol here of 46 from January 1st, 1798, to the time that the Pope is taken captive. 
And that's going to relate to the 46 years from 1798 to 1844, right? Now, this he symbol... Taken captive on, sorry, Theodore. I thought he was taken captive on the 15th of Feb. Okay, so is it the 15th? Of course, it was different time zones. <laughs> well, it, well it, it's, it is the 15th or 16th, so let's put it that way. Um, either way, if it's the 15th, it would be an inclusive count. If it's the 16th, it's a ordinal count. Now, I think you're probably right. It is the 15th. Um, but you still have these 46 days. So this is inclusive. And, and somebody could confirm that and check it for me if they, if they could. I mean, some people give different dates for the Pope being taken captive as well, just of, of, of what event you're going to mark as the Pope's captivity. But this would be uh, when Berthier uh, enters in and they take the Pope, actually take him captive. But this symbol exists here. Now, I, I'm trying to remember how it works because I remember that if you go from January 1st and you go back, you get November 15th, which is also 46 days. But I can't remember what I did with that. So um, so for now, which we're looking at Samuel Snow's letters, and we can see that this relates to 1798, the symbol of 46, from 1798 to 1844. And that's when Samuel Snow writes his first letter. Now, he's going to, um, we, we normally, we would count the 77 days to May 2nd or two months and 16 days to May 2nd, and then two months and 16 days to July 18th. But what okay. I'm more, what's that? One comment. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at, a book by Richard P. McBrien, Lives of the Popes, on page 330. It gives reference to uh, February 15th as the day that Berthier entered Rome, and that after that, the Pope was forced to withdraw to Tuscany, a virtual prisoner. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's February 15th is the date that I normally mark, but it, it's 46 days, right? Right. And, and we know that the Pope's going to be in captivity from, so we could say here from February 15th, uh, 1798 to August 29th, 1799. I don't right. know how many days that is, but it would be well, 365 plus... Uh, yeah, roughly 180 something or 190 days or something like that, that he's in captivity. Um, but the point is, I, I wanted to focus on this, this date and these 46 days. So the 46 days, the symbol of the first day of the first month, and this symbol here. Now, we know that this is also the second day or the second month, 16th day. And it's a symbol of 216, which is six times six times six. So it's a symbol of 666. So this is an important symbol, of course. Now, this is Samuel Snow. Now, is Samuel Snow... Is he is he connected to the mark of the beast? Like he's not the Antichrist or anything. So why do we have this symbol attached to snow? Because a man. Okay, well, explain. Isn't six the number of man? 
Yeah, six is the number of man. But why why is Snow starting his letters with this symbol? I mean, he's not particularly interested in the Sunday law or anything like that. No, he's not. Right. Now, we know <laughs> he's going to be proclaiming October 22, eventually, 1844. And that's the 10th day of the seventh month. And that in Jeff's lines, we mark this as the Sunday law, right? Okay. So, so symbols are attached to these prophets that they may not, and I'm calling some a prophet just in that loosest sense, um, uh, that they may not be aware of, right? So obviously he's not aware that the date that he writes this is important in any way. Okay, now to answer your other question, yeah. uh, February 15th, 1798 to August 29th, 1799, uh, you're talking total of 560 days or 80 weeks. Oh, yeah, I was counting it in the same year. So 560 days, which is 80 weeks. Okay, thanks. And that's also 13,440 hours. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, so there's a significance here in, in these numbers, which um, one is it's, it's actually 80 weeks. So it's, it's a round number of weeks. Um, yeah, and I was, I was looking, so if you took off 560, Minus 365, you get, um, so, so that'd be 15 minus 6, what am I doing here, and minus 5 is 5, 15 minus 6 is 9, and that's going to be 195 days between these two dates if they were in the same year, so. And sometimes I look at that symbol. Now, we're going to have uh, 63 days here. So 63 days is going to go to April 19th, right, which is going to be the first day of the first month. And then we're going to have um, another period we mark of 63 days. It's actually in exclusive that is it doesn't include the last date and this is going to go to where from the first day of the first month it's going to go to what month what day how about june 22 yeah. which is the sixth day of the third month So this is Pentecost. So Samuel Snow marks the first day of the first month. He also has this symbol attached that's 666. He also has another symbol of the first day of the first month in between a period of 63, two periods of 63 days. This one being an exclusive count. So technically it's 64 days. Uh, but the symbol here, the sixth day of the third month, relates to the 63 days. Now, what I'm focusing on here is this idea of the symbols of Pentecost, the symbols of the first day of the first month, and the symbols of 666, especially when it's expressed as February 16th. Because when we're looking at this election of Ted Wilson, there are two different views generally being held in this movement regarding what that means. And that is people focus upon this symbol of 666 as the significant symbol to, uh, to place Ted, William, uh, Ted, Ted Wilson as the, the 20th president still of the Adventist church as being the one who's going to bring in the Sunday law. But we can, we can interpret these symbols, even though we can see these symbols are here, 
we need to recognize what they mean and then what they mean is in a larger larger context so for instance snow writing a letter on february 16th we wouldn't say that he's bringing in the sunday law he is connected to the proclamation of the sunday law and all of these symbols that are here are going to be tied to ted wilson as well but it's not so much what ted wilson is going to do it's how to us to understand where we are in time and how we are to understand these symbols how we are to understand the prophecies that relate to this movement because i would say that ted wilson what happened on june 6th is a message to this movement more than anything else so so we will come back to this Okay. So let's take a look at what I had drawn here. Now I could have drawn this out on there, but I have just some things that I had drawn out already. Now, one of the things that we had looked at is this period from the first day of the first month. So this was really a study that we were doing um, in other places, but the first day of the first month in Ezra 7, 9, and, and from Ezra 7 to 10, we're going to have all the way from the first day of the first month in 457 BC to the first day of the first month in, um, and, and in, uh, so in, um, let me see here. I'm going to have to go to this other thing here. So this might look a little bit confusing. So I don't know what the best way to deal with this is. Um, just hang on a second. Okay, so what you're going to look at is an Excel spreadsheet. And, and it's going to be a little bit confusing. So, uh, and I, because there's a whole bunch of things I want to bring together, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to dump too much stuff on you. But we, we have to go back to this idea. And this idea has to do with that in 457 BC, from the first day of the first month, so you can see in this center column here, this is going to be, um, April 26th, uh, 457 BC. And it's going to go all the way. You know, he's going to, well, we'll just mark it here. So he leaves the river Ahava after a period of three days. So, you know, we could mark the three days here. And then he's going to travel um, to Jerusalem and he's going to arrive on the first day of the fifth month. Now, halfway between that, we know, is this Pentecost. So halfway between the time when he left the river Ahava to the time when he arrived at Jerusalem is Pentecost. Now, it's interesting here that this is um, the 65th day of the year, right, in this context. Well, we know it's if we counted, an exclusive count would exclude this and it would exclude the first day of the first month, it would be the dates in between those, it would be 63 days. If we count it ordinally, it's 65. And if we counted it cardinally, it's 64. Now, I know that that causes, for some people, a little bit of confusion, but we do this all the time. So if I'm gonna count, you know, from today till Sunday is three days, we know that that's counting ordinally. And, and yet we're expressing it in a cardinal count, which would be inclusive reckoning. So if I express an ordinal count in cardinal terms, we call it inclusive reckoning. I could also count uh, just two days till Sunday from today, because I can just say, well, it's two days away. 
Saturday, Sunday, and that would be a cardinal count. But I could say there's only one day between today and Sunday, right? And that would be an exclusive count. So there's just a day in between. And I might do that, especially if I'm near the end of the day and say, well, you know, we just got tomorrow to go through and then we'll be into Sunday. And, you know, we don't usually use exclusive counting, but, but it is something that exists. So I just wanted to point that out, that we have these symbols that can be attached to the sixth day of the third month. Basically, the 65 and the 63 um, being attached to it. And then there's the first day of the fifth month, and we know between the first day of the fifth month and the 20th day of the ninth month, you're going to have the 10th day of the seventh month. So this is, of course, the Day of Atonement. And you can see it's the 187th day of the year as a cardinal count from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month is 186 days. Now, what we had done is we had taken Ezra and we had now attached here. So you can see I have on the left side, I have these day counts. And I'm going to count lunar months. That is, each of these lunar months is going to start on the first day of that lunar month. And what I'm counting from is from 9-11. Now, you can see the first date there is August 22nd. That is the first day of the of the sixth month um, is uh, and I don't I don't think actually August I'm trying to remember how that works um, yeah so that's what I'm doing so the first day of the sixth month in 2001 is going to be the month in which uh, the, the the twin towers fall and. And that's going to be on September 11th. So you can see that this month goes from August 22nd to September 19th. So the, the last day of that month would be September 19th. And then you can see the second month is going to be from September 20 to October 18th. Because it would take a day off there. I just haven't done that yet. And so each of these months, we can count these months. But what we're counting is a day for a month. Now, if we do that, and we count from that first month when we finally get to the end of this count. So we're going through these 354 days. The last day of, the th of this year, so if we're going to count this here, is going to be April 4th, which would make the first day of the first month as April 5th, 2030. So we all already marked this date, and we're going to go over some of those things again, but we've marked April 5th, 2030 as a symbolic date. We're not predicting an event on that date. It's a date that ties our history, what we're presently going through, into the structure of, of the story of Ezra. And it, and it gives us indications or, or evidences that what we're going through right now is a fulfillment of prophecy and it's an experience that's related to the 20th day of the ninth month. That is, it's related to our history presently. Now, these are all lunar months on this left column. Each of these months are 29 on average, 29.530587 days, right? So obviously they're going to be 30 or 29 days. Um, they'll just average out to that. Now, I also did this. I used a 30-day month, so a prophetic month, and I started from 9-11 itself. So I didn't start from the first day of the sixth month. I just started from 9-11 because 9-11 is a symbol of the first day of the first month. We've had that understanding in this movement for a while, right? Jeff is the one who, who first did that, and that is 9-11 is the first day of the first month. And midnight is the fifth day of the fourth month. And the midnight cry is the first day of the fifth month. And, of course, the Sunday law is the tenth day of the seventh month. So we've had these symbols. Now, when I do that, when I count months of 30 days, instead of alternating between 29 and 30 days, when I get to the end of this, oops, 
I will find that it's going to end, that is the last day of the year is going to be October 7th, 2030, or no, pardon me, October 8th, 2030. And October 8th, 2030 is the 10th day of the seventh month. So the 354th day, which comes from Ezra, it's going to bring us to the 10th day of the seventh month. Just like the 29 and 30 brings us to the first day of the first month, this is going to bring us to the 10th day of the seventh month, which of course is the 187th day of the year. So, so we have these two things producing, these two different ways of counting months, producing a connection that we can see is important, the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, which is a symbol of July 18. Now, so I'm going to have to try to explain this the best that I can. Now, in our studying, we had come upon, uh, so I'm going to go to the Bible here. So I'm bringing together quite a few different studies. So I know that some people might have to watch this over again. Um, but when we were studying Ezra, not Ezra, I want to go to Judges. I'm not here. So Judges chapter 3 and 4. So we had these, these Judges. So we had chapter 3. But when we got to chapter 4, we had in Judges 4 verse 3, a statement about uh, the children of Israel that they um, were oppressed by Jabin king of Canaan and the captain of his host Sisera for a period of 20 years. Now this struck me right away when I saw this period of 20 years um, because I recognize that uh, we have periods of 20 years in this movement. And so I, I wanted to, to think about where this 20 years would go. Now, um, now, one of the things that I looked at, and, and we've already done a day for a month. So in the story of Ezra, we did a day for a month, and a day for a month gave us um what we what we saw there and we're going to come back to that so so we could look at 20 years as 20 months that is we could we can convert it to 20 months in our movement and we can also look at it as 20 years so we're going to look at both of these but let's just address something like 20 months now the context here so anybody who hasn't been following the morning studies some of this may not make any sense at all but we had come to understand that this oppression is going to be characterized by the message that was given by Parminder and Tess. And that Jabin is going to represent the papal spirit. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard again because this will probably be the easiest way to illustrate it. Um, Now, we kind of have to put a number of balls in the air here to sort of juggle this around, and you're going to have to keep some things in your memory, but we will come back to this. Um, so one thing we noted was we have two different dates here, September 7th, 2019, and August 29th, 2019. And this is going to be what Jeff marked as uh, it's 220 years from the death of Pius VI. Okay. So this is a resurrection or restoration of the papal spirit in this movement. And this is going to be in Germany, 
This is going to be Stephen O'Delia and John Mark being brought before a tribunal of the elders, whatever you want to call them, of the Omega, right? So Parminder, Tess, uh, Tavo, and some others. Now, Jeff is going to wake up here. Now, this period of time is just simply nine days. But if we counted 20 months, we, there's two different ways we could count back 20 months. So we could do it as lunar months, and we could do it as uh, prophetic months. Now, if we do that, we count back here, this is going to be um, 20 lunar months. And from here to here is going to be 20 prophetic months. Now, maybe, you know, some people might not understand the logic of doing this. But what I was doing is I was counting back from here and counting back from here, because since they're different spans of time, I could tie these two dates together, and they would bring me to this date, January 15th, 2018. Now, January 15th, 2018 is um, not significant as far as any events that I know of. I mean, maybe events occurred then, but I don't know of anything, but it brings me back to this date. Now, this is a date, of course, of the 15th day of the first month. It's a symbol of that. So, so we can understand that symbol. But it was interesting when I looked at it in the context of these uh, months from September 11th. That is, I'm going to draw this here, I guess. So if I count from that September 11th date, and I count the number of months. Oh, so I just figured something out, which I'm kind of dozy here. Um, this is going to be to uh, January 15th. I don't know why I didn't notice this before. This is going to be 200 months. I think I'm doing this right. Yeah. And now doing it both ways. So I could do it uh, either as the 30 day ones or the 29.53 day ones. They will both bring me to, to, well, they don't, oh, that's not correct. So. The ones that bring me here is the 30 day one. And if I count from September 11th, because uh, they wouldn't obviously be the same, the 29.53, I'm going to have another date. This date here is September 23rd. So I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused about this and how I'm going to do this. But this is 2017. So this date, September 23rd, 2017, this is when I present the prediction before midnight at Lambert Church and talk about the symbol of July 18th as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. And that's 777 days before November 9th, 2019. So if you put over here 63 days and you got November 9th, 2019, this is going to be 777 days. Okay. Now this period of, let me see here. Yeah. Is there any questions about what I did there? I know it's a little busy. So I want me to just kind of review it or sum it up or. 
I got 199 months from 9-11 to January 15. Right. So when I say that it's 200, I'm counting this uh, in, inclusively. Um, I'm counting this um, ordinally. So it's 999 months have passed, right? So that's, it's actually the start of the 200 months, the 200th month. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So it's the start of the 200th month. And so this is also going to give me September 23rd, 2017. So 199 months have passed, and this is the first day of the 200th month. And this is the, also the day of the first day of the 200th month. So what we notice is we have how many months then? If we go to, to this, we have a symbol that's going to give us from September 23rd. Um, so this is giving us the symbol of 200 months, and this is giving us a symbol of 20 months. So what is 200 plus 20? Two twenty. Oh, well, two hundred and twenty for restoration. Right. So it's the restoration symbol. Okay. So so I, I just kind of noticed that here now. Now, you know, people could be be fairly particular about this because they could argue, well, um, you know, you're counting sort of these different spans and putting them together to give you two twenty. But but that's what we get. We have these these twenty months and these two hundred months. And we put them together to get this symbol because the 20 months speak to this date going from these two dates and 200 months are going to go from September 11th and connect us to these two dates. So we have these spans of dates that are now being connected by 200 months and 20 months. Because it goes out to the road, right? I walked out there. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, the car there, especially Donovan's car. I thought not to start rubbing on that. Okay. So. I mean, this is rather involved. So we're going to go through it again. Just looking at what we saw with these structures. I'm just switching my microscope, microphone, and my camera again. <clears throat> and I'll go back to this Excel sheet. Okay, and so these 30-day months, I'm just trying to see where we go. Yes, so you can see right here, I'm going to zoom in a bit. This is the 220th month, and when does it begin? Using 30-day months. 9-7. So it's that that's going to be September seventh, two thousand nineteen. That's when Jeff awakens and notices this apostasy that's going to occur. That he's going to connect it, and I don't think he does it on that day, but he does later. Connects it to August twenty ninth, seventeen ninety nine, two hundred and twenty years. So is this significant? Can when we look at these, um, these spans of time that we found from the months, can we just kind of dismiss them? 
August 29th was the um, camp meeting in um, Germany. Is that yes. Germany? And, and okay, so yeah. Yeah, where uh, Bronwyn had issues or something. Yeah. Well, the, the issue there is Stephen and Odilio and John Mark were brought to a tribunal to, to basically be, you know, given an ultimatum that if they didn't repent of the July 18th prediction, they would be, you know, excommunicated. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. So that's August 29th. So that's the revival of the papal spirit in this movement. But we can see that not only is it 220 years, the first part, 220 years from the death of the Pope, it's 220 months from 9-11 to the day that when death awakes from his sleep. Okay, so is, is, is that making sense to people? Is anybody having trouble following this? Yeah, I am, but I'm, I'm going to try to grasp it. It's just that it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense because my mind. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's fair enough. So, so we can see all, all that I did is we had already looked at Ezra and I had started counting out these months. Now, uh, to just go back to that, uh, where we had started um, when we first address this point is, uh, let me see if I can find the diagram. I got way too many diagrams here, all addressing this. Um, there, there it is, here's what I wanted. So this is, this is the, the last 65 days of Colin's prediction, right? So he's going to have this election. Uh, here, this is the election of November 3rd of Biden. And then we're going to have the end of his, this is, it actually doesn't show the 65 days. This is showing a whole period of time. But his, his period, his prophetic mirror that he uses for um, Trump to come back into power ends on January 11th. And it's, it's a period of 600 and, uh, or 65 days, which is an ordinal count. So in order to be 65 days, it would be at the end of January 11th, that the beginning of January 12th, where his prediction ends. Remember, Colin isn't predicting anything on that date. It just ends up being part of his structure. He has the 65 literal days at the beginning, and he uses them sort of in a symbolic sense at the end but I just drew them out as literal days. And in the story of Ezra, on the first day of the 10th month, they're going to begin this act of doing these divorces from these strange wives, according to the law. And they're going to have, they're going to do that for a period of 88 days. And so what we did is we said, well, 88 days can represent 88 months. And so we counted 88 months of 30 days from this April 5th date, that is the first day of the first month, right? And so remember, we're counting from the first day of the first month as being September 11th. We're counting 30 day months. So April uh, or September 11th, 2001 to April 5th, 2030 is. Um, a period of 309, 354 months, complete months, representing the 354 days of the story of Ezra. Now, for people who haven't seen those videos, I suggest you watch them um, in this series addressing that because it's extremely profound. The idea that we can take the year of Ezra and we can attach it to our history in, in that direct day for a month fashion. But when we do that 30 day months and we go back from April 5th, we come the 10th day, the first day of the 10th month then is at the beginning of January 12th, 2023, when Colin's prediction completely ends. And so this is a period 
in which the divorces are to occur according to the law. It's also not just 88 months, it's the symbol of the 264, the July 18th, 26th day of the fourth month, which is July 18th, so 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar, and it's just times 10. So we can see that here, when I originally did this, I wasn't counting back to September 11th. Um, and he, even in this one, I'm counting, this part I'm counting is 29 day months. But if I count from September 11th, right, this is the first day of the first month, 354 months brings me to um, Oh, and that's going to bring me, and that's, okay, that's the other thing. So that's where the situation lies. So there's some things there I have to sort of explain. If I'm counting 30-day months uh, from April 5th and I go back, it's going to bring me back to March 6th. So so there's, um, so it's not as clean and neat as, as I, I was trying to explain it. So here we went back 30-day months, but when we count this way, we end up on the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. So I forgot about that. September and that, that um, the 10th day of the seventh month is October 8th, 2030. That is, it's the last month is going to go from September 9th, 2030 and end on October 8th, 2030. And that's going to be the 10th day of the seventh month. So when I count 30 day months, it actually brings me to the 10th day of the seventh month. So it's going to bring me 187 days further than if I count the other way with lunar months. But here, we're just counting back from April 5th, 2030, these 30-day months. So hopefully that's not confusing people because it confuses me a little bit. Um, so, And I'm trying to find a way to put this all together so that people can see it. But one of the things that we will see is if we count the 99 months, that is from the 20th day of the ninth month, there is going to be 11 days until the first day of the 10th month, and then 88 days to the first day of the first month, right? So we're counting back this way to get those 99 months of 30 day months. And this brings us to February 16th, 2022. And as I pointed out before, February 16th, 2022 is the first time that um, the Three Angels Messages Fellowship in sending out their weekly notices for the studies coming up on, on the Sabbath intentionally left my name and my contact information for the Zoom studies out of their email. So it, it's representing a crisis in this movement. Now we're saying that that crisis is this issue over uh, Trump and the presidents of the United States, but also the issue of dealing with the presidents of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, why they, they decided to leave my contact information out, they've never told me, uh, but I know at that time we were having a, if you want to call it that, a conflict um, that is, there was a message being given regarding me personally um, uh, and that I was teaching error and that I was being deceptive. Now, that was cleared up later on, but they still did not reinstate um, uh, links to our studies. So February 16th, 2022 marks that. So it's 11 months or 11 days prophetically represented as months to the end of Colin's prediction, which is what this conflict was about. I know Ted Wilson's uh, president now. Right. Yeah. So we're going to address that. They voted him in president. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to address that. That's why, why we're doing this study here right now. So, <clears throat> okay. Because we want to address this. So one of the things we look at is we dealt with this symbol of of Pentecost, so it's Sivan 6, or the third day, sixth day of the third month. Now, Ted Wilson is is re-elected on June 6, 2022. You can see that. And that date 
can be understood as 666. And the way we would do that is June is the sixth month. It's the sixth day. And we have 2022, two, two, which 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. And so he's elected on the date that's 666. Now, also, the camp meeting ran for six days. It, 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 the sixth day is tomorrow. It concludes, not camp meeting, but general conference session. Um, and so we also have June 6th and then six days following. So that also symbolizes 666. Now, somebody asked me a question. Maybe somebody can answer this. When does he, if, if somebody was re-elected, re obviously he still uh, is general conference president. But if they re-elect a new president, when does he assume office? Is it the day he's elected or the last day of the camp meeting or anybody know? I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. I couldn't find it out. I, I was looking for that myself, um, trying to figure out exactly, especially when he first became uh, General Conference President. It was June 23rd, 2010, right? And then he was reaffirmed as President on June 8th, I think it was, or no, July. It was July 3rd or something. I can't remember now. Maybe it was, I can't remember the date, but in, in 2015. And then they were going to have uh, a general conference session in 2020, but that was put off for two years. So now when he's 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 made president again or re-elected, uh, re it's only for three years because he actually served seven years in his second term. So he served um, and he served five years, then seven years, and then three years to make up the 15 years. Um, so the idea here is that him being elected is, is affirming what Colin had been teaching. So Colin is the one who first came up with the idea that we could look at the 20 um, Seventh-day Adventist presidents and the 19 Republican presidents to represent the North and the South, the Northern and Southern Israel, right? Uh, that was later up picked up by Tabo, and Tabo presented it. Um, but it was originally Colin's study. And so Colin has been sticking to that study that we're going to have Trump, the 19th Republican president, as president, and Ted Wilson as the 20th Seventh day Adventist president, as president, when the Sunday law occurs. Now, my view is that that already has occurred. That is, when we're talking about the role of Trump and the role of Ted Wilson, that that was something that was symbolic to this movement, that it's not something that we would still apply into the future. That's my understanding. That is, we had these lines, that 777 days, we had marked midnight in the midnight cry for the period of the pandemic, which later on was November 9th to July 18th. And we could see that for this movement, that creates this thing that we would call the Sunday law. Now, of course, we've had other things after that. But even the mandates, the way that it was presented by Odilio, still fits in with our 777 structure, even though it extends it a bit beyond. And we know that it's the type of the Sunday law and that our movement is typical. So to try to take our movement and apply what was typical to something that's actual, I don't think that we can do that. I don't think that that's, that's what this movement is about. We're not predicting the time of the Sunday law. We're, we're being prepared by going through an experience. Now, you can see here a number of things. One is, from June 6, 2022, which is um, Pentecost, if I count 99 lunar months, it will bring me to Pentecost in 2030. 
Now, the way that I would do that is that I would take um, the period of time. So this is adding another level or another layer to this understanding. Now, the manna falls. When does, how many days does the manna fall? It's going to start on the the sixteenth day of which month that the man is first going to fall. Anybody remember? I think it's the second month. The second month. So isn't that February sixteenth as a symbol? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So February sixteenth. So the man is going to fall. And on on the 16th day of the second month and it's going to fall for 494 months lunar months that is it's going to fall from the 16th day of the second month and then when they go out on the 16th day of the first month 40 years later the manna will have ceased now they didn't of course have that's a sunday that they're going to do that but the manna wouldn't have fallen on Sabbath. So the last time technically the manna falls is on Passover, the 14th day of the first month, which is on a Friday. So we've had this chronology presented in our studies. But it's 494 months. Now, if we were to count then from the end of November 9th, 1989, from the 10th day of the eighth month, it's going to bring us to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2029. That is, it's going to be in a Jubilee year, the 10th day of the seventh month counts as the beginning of the year. And so we'll just say that 2029 is a Jubilee year in, in, in that way. So it's gonna to go to the beginning of that year that begins in the fall. But we know the religious year begins in the spring. And we already have the 10th day of the seventh month marked in 2030, one year later. But 494 lunar months will bring us to that date. Now, if we do months of 30 days, so 494 months of 30 days, we're going to go from the end of November 9th, 1989, and we're going to come to Pentecost in 2030. And if we count backwards from Pentecost in 2030, it's going to be 99 lunar months. And if we count back from the 10th day of the seventh month in 2029, it's going to bring us back to February 16th, 2022, the date when they no longer publish the links to these studies. And that's 99 prophetic months. And we see here what we had drawn at the beginning. Remember, we had drawn Samuel Snow. Remember we had drawn Samuel Snow? And, and here we had put uh, January 1st. That's when in 1844 that he's going to decide that he's going to present his message that Jesus is coming back in the fall. And then he writes his first letter on February 16th. Now, in, in this year, 2022, April 19th is not the first day of the first month, it's April 3rd. So there's gonna be 46 days between February 16th, 2022 and April 3rd. So you can see these two periods of 46 days. And then from the first day of the first month, we have 64 days to Pentecost to when we have the reelection of Ted Wilson. So one thing that we can see here is that we have these symbols of 666 but we also have the symbols of Pentecost tied together in Millerite history with Samuel Snow's letters and tied together in our history in the present crisis within this movement. Is, is, is there any points that people want me to go over or any comments about this? So here we see this quite involved structure, these 99 prophetic months, 99 lunar months. We have all these periods of time. Is there something that somebody notices or would like to comment on so jeff you have the 20 uh, the 2030 april 5th 2030 
first day, fifth month. Um, look like you don't have any. Um, that just lines up with everything, right? Yeah. So, so we just line up. up. Yeah. <clears throat> so, just to go to answer that question. So, when we addressed the first place that we run into April fifth, twenty thirty, is in the week of Christ study. That is, if we take the week of Christ and we start using a day for a year, the days go from left to right and the years go from right to left. And so we first arrived at April 5th, 2030, because it's the first day of the first month in the week of Christ. And so, so I noticed this back in 2015, but, and I put it second coming, you know, just wrote that in there in when I first did it. Obviously, I didn't think I was predicting the second coming, but I just thought, oh, this is way in the future. You know, it must be something like the second coming if it means anything, because that's back in 2018. But I had made a prediction regarding uh, the 12th day of the first month. And, and that prediction dealt with April 8th as a symbol or April 18th. I wasn't sure which one to use, the, the date from uh, 27 AD or the date from 2019 but it ended up being fulfilled on April 8th. And then we could go all the back way back to 2021 was the 10th day of the first month. And 2022 would be the ninth day of the first month. That's the day of the triumphal entry. That's the year we're in. The symbol for that is the ninth day of the first month. Um, but if we kept going back, it would bring us to the fifth day of the fourth month in 2030, because that's the first day of the first month in 2030. So, so that's where we first came across this symbol. Now, we also had some other things that were rather interesting. So back in 2016, Stephen and I had come to understand the general idea that from 34 AD to 1798 is a period of 1764 years. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so people can see it. And that's seven times 252. And it's basically the 1260 papal persecution attached with the 504 years of pagan Roman persecution from 34 AD to 538. So from the end of the 70 weeks, there's two times 252 to 538, and then five times 252 to 1798. And Stephen was the one that suggested we go backwards, and this brought us back to Jacob blessing his 12 sons. And there's going to be 252 years to the end of that period dealing with uh, the conquering of the land. And then there's three times 252 to 723. So again, this is about the land of Israel. And then you're going to have three times 252 to 34 AD, the stoning of Stephen. So this is for ancient Israel, and this is for spiritual Israel. And then you're going to have um, 232 years that go back to when Abraham leaves Haran. And so I noticed that if I counted 232 years from 1798, I come to 2030. So this was the second witness for 2030, though not the second one that I found. So this one I didn't really find. I mean, I might have noticed it, but I never thought anything of it. Now, So you can see here, I have these mirrors. This is a prophetic mirror connecting Abraham leaving Haran with the events in 2030 as a symbol. We don't know that time is going to go on that long or anything, and it doesn't need to in order for these symbols still to work. Now, if I count from the first day of the seventh month in 1863, or 1963 BC, pardon me, and I count to the first day of the first month in 2030, I have a period of uh, 3,992 3, years, or 414 lunar years. Lunar years are just years of 12 lunar months. And some of these things I'm not going to go through in detail. The only thing I do want to show is that that period of time is 22 uh, 
periods of 187 lunar years, which can be divided into 11 and 187 times 187 and 11 times 187, with the stoning of Stephen as uh, the rough center of it. It's 34 AD is the rough center. So obviously, we're going from the first day of the seventh month. This would technically, stoning of Stephen's the 10th day of the seventh month. And then you have uh, to the first day of the first month. And, and there are ways that I can actually work this out in finer detail. But the general idea is that this period of time here, 187 lunar years, um, is, um, is, is, is a symbol. Now, I could also count, which we, we looked at from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030. So if I count from April 19th, 1844, it's 186 uh, biblical years to April 5th, 2030. But it's also 187 prophetic years plus 20 prophetic months to between um, April 19th 1844 and April 5th, 2030. So we have multiple witnesses that tie all of these dates together. And 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 so it's it's rather involved structure. So I'm still working on trying to to address this and and put it in order so that it's simple for people to follow step by step. But the thing is we have this first day of the first month witness to and now we have these other witnesses that show us if we can go from October 19th, 2029, the 10th day of the seventh month, and this is going to bring us to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. Um, and we also have this in Millerite history, do we not? So October, October 22, 1844 is the 10th day of the seventh month. But Miller had originally marked the 10th day of the seventh month in 1843, correct? Correct. And this is the thing Samuel Snow picked up on. Now, he, he gave his personal testimony on December 31st, 1843. Um, but it's the next day that he decides that he's going to present his message after he had presented his testimony. And, and so we can see that there is, there is, there's a reason to look at this span of time from October. So if we, if we look at this as being Samuel Snow, we can see January 1st, even though this is 2022, I'll make this a bit bigger and to February 16th, and February 16th is 99 prophetic months to October 19th, 2029. It's also um, 99 um, uh, prophetic months, so that shouldn't be to October 19th. This one should be to here. There's the problem. I did that wrong. So it's 99 prophetic months to April 5th, 2030. Pardon me, that was a, a mistake. And then if we go from the 10th, the Savan date, the 6th of Savan, the Pentecost, and we go back, it's 232 days to October 19th, 2029, which is the 10th day of the seventh month. And these 232 days would witness to the 232 years from 1798. And, and, and you need to illustrate this better. I need to really show, because I draw, I started drawing out, um, this history dealing with the Pope in 1798. And we can tie that history of the Pope with this movement in 2019. But we can see that this is also, uh, here, I mean, I'm gonna go to the whiteboard again. So people understand what I'm doing, how, how I'm seeing this. I don't, I don't know how to express it yet. I see how it lines up. I see how it can line up. So I'm going to try to draw this out. Maybe it will make more sense. 
dates and all that line up. Yeah. Yeah, the dates definitely line up, but it's it's the overall structure that I want people to see. Yeah, because, okay. because this is tying together all these different histories. So let's try it again. And if, there's so many spans of time. I can't expect uh, people to remember it all. It was pretty interesting, though, when I showed it to Heidi, how she put it together. She could see it all, and she struggles with these things. So, um, so we go back to 1798, and we're going to go here to 2030. So this is a period of 232 years. But we have events here that are marked, and we have this 46 inclusive days. Um, so maybe I'll do it this way. I'll just take 1798 and sort of mark it out like this. So you're going to have this. Um, we'll have the first day of the first month, right? We're going to have 46 days. And then we're going to have, what was it, uh, 560 days? So this is going to be February 15th, and this is going to be August 29th, 1799. And this date here is, is this 46 days. This is going to tie us to um, Samuel Snow as well. So then we're going to come to 1844. And in 1844, we're going to have Samuel Snow's structure. So he's going to have the first day of the first month and these 46 days. And then he's going to have, um, well, I guess we could do it. Yeah, we'll do it like this. He's going to have these 63 days. We'll call them 63 days. So this is going to be February 16th. This is going to be the first day of the first month, April uh, 19th. And then he's going to have the sixth day of the third month. And then this, of course, is the 10th day of the seventh month. Now, the thing interesting about whether we're, we're dealing with this here, or if we're dealing with the first day of the first month, we know if we combine this with Millerite history, Millerite history really kind of ends with the 10th day of the seventh month. It doesn't continue. That continues in our time. That is, that's going to be continuing until 2030. And you can look at it from here. So if we go to 9-11, right, we know we have this period of time, which is going to be 354 months to um, this case, it's going to be to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030, right? But we also know that we have tied to November 9th, uh, 1989. We have, we have dates attached to our history as well. So it's going to be to the history of the movement at the time that Jeff is awakening. But we also have things that connect back here to our history presently. So there's a lot of detail in here. Lots of things need to be filled in uh, to understand what yeah, happened. We have middle one says February. February uh, what does the middle one say there? You get first day, first month, and then uh, February 1799. No, between uh, first day, first month, and the 16th. Yeah. Now, I'm counting 40 days here. So this is January 1st. I'm counting 46 days inclusive. Here I'm counting it uh, cardinal. Okay, I got you. January 16th. Yeah, so, so these two dates relate to each other in that sense. Now, now, this history is also tied, these 63 days is also tied back to uh, the, what we call the, uh, the Levitical chiasm that Jeff pointed out dealing with what happened from June 9th uh, to November 9th. 
well, actually, it goes all the way to, to the 11th day of the first month, January 11th, uh, 2020. So, so there's lots of pieces of information, lots of pieces of the puzzle that we, we have to understand in order to, to really see the whole picture. But we can see generally that these 232 years are going to be tied together in this way. And it's a symbol that exists in, in that history, right? So it, it's something that we can't, when we're looking at what we're going through right now with the re-election of Ted Wilson, in order to understand it, we need to understand the symbols and the structure that we are a part of. And many people in this movement are not aware of the structure. That is, they're not watching these videos. They haven't seen all of the light that has been coming to this movement from these different lines of study, how they're all coming together. And what they're showing us is how to understand what's happening presently. And so, So my, my main point is that we can't just look at what happened with the re-election of Ted Wilson as sup in a superficial manner. Now, one of the things that I had said, and I don't know if I said it in any of the studies, but I knew that since the end of Colin's prediction is January 11th, 2023, it's way off in the future, not that far away, really, but it's in the future, that if Ted Wilson had not been reelected, what, what would Colin have done with his prediction? Could he have maintained his prediction up until this, these midterm elections and the events that follow? No. No. So, so we know, or we should have known, and I knew that, it wouldn't make sense for Ted Wilson not to be reelected because that would basically be an end of Collins prediction. But we can't have an end of Collins prediction yet because we're not there yet. We have to come to in this movement. We have to come to these events. We have to pass through this time because the purpose here is for this movement for this movement to experience a conversion. To enter into covenant, to understand our mission, to go to the upper room and to be reconciled to one another. Those are the things that this movement is being called to. It started with putting away the wives. Right. Continue. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we have a call to repentance. So that call to repentance was December 25th in a certain sense. It's, it also relates to February 16th. Um, and, and there's lots of other dates that we can look at in our history. You know, April 3rd being the, the first day of the first month as a symbol, or even January 1st, 2022. So, so there's, there's lots that we could um, learn from looking at these symbols and looking at the dates and events that have happened in this movement. And we know that we can connect um, in this structure. That is, so this structure has been validated because of, when I put that on a line, I can mark the 220th month from September 11th to these symbols of September, uh, September 7th, 2019, and August 29th, 2019, and and tying this back to 1798. So so these these all become integrated. But we also have, you know, this period of the falling of the manna. And so, can we say that God has been giving us manna since November 9th, 1989? Yes. And 
this would show that the manna will cease to fall in this period of time here from however we want to look at it. And, and again, I'm using these as symbols. So whether these events actually happen or not, it doesn't matter. But in this period of time that's represented um, in these 232 days from October 19th, 2019 to June 8th, 2030. So they're going to go from the Day of Atonement to Pentecost in this case. And so that 494 months is going to end with this date that we just passed that's connected by 99 lunar months. And that's the, the re-election of Ted Wilson. And, and I don't think we would expect that Ted Wilson is going to be the general conference president in 2030. And again, I'm just saying these dates are symbolic. But we, we would have to expect that this movement has to go through Colin's prediction before it can really come together to deal with how we're studying. And again, this is not about people. When we talk about the divorce, we're not talking about separating from our brethren because the symbol of Pentecost is what? Is it a separation symbol? No, it's no, a unity it's symbol. Unity, unity. Yeah, it's a unity symbol. So, so we have this symbol of February 16th, which is a 666 symbol. And we have June 6, 2022, that's a 666 symbol. But we can see that they're tied to Pentecost. They're tied to the manna being given. This is the time in which God has given this movement. And we don't, and again, you know, I'm not saying that we, we have to look at these dates literally. They may be literal dates in, for this movement. I don't know. But what they are do is doing is witnessing now to the events happening. Even if this structure is only symbolic, they witness symbolically to an understanding of June 6th and Colin's prediction. Now, a person could interpret it differently than I have. That is, we could take all the same pieces of information and someone could argue that Colin's prediction is going to bring unity to this movement. But that would not be looking at everything that's been given to us. And I mean, maybe in a sense, we can't pick and choose who we want to hear it from. Yeah. And, and maybe in a sense, it is partly true that, that Colin's prediction, even in its failure, will be something that brings about unity. But we can't take Colin's prediction, at least from everything that we've been witnessing. We can't say that his prediction will be fulfilled because one is we know we can't predict events. And it's not just even day, you know, day for a year being the issue here. We just can't predict events. We've not been able to attach events in our line um, to dates. Everything has been internal in this movement so far. It's been God speaking to us to correct us, to teach us. And and that's what our, our goals and our aims for this movement are not to create division and separation, but are to bring about unity. And, and that comes about from a personal effort, a personal conversion, not from dismissing others or, or condemning others because they think differently. That this movement needs to recognize that the papal spirit still exists within this movement. That is, we still criticize our brethren. We still exercise authority that is God's alone to exercise. We're no different than the disciples. But we haven't got to Pentecost yet. We, we have these symbols of Pentecost, but we can see that June 6, 2022, isn't the end. It's 99 lunar months to June 8th, 2030. And so we can look at June 6th as also the 20th day of the ninth month. That is, this whole period, this history here, and we could put December 5th 
uh, 20, uh, 2021 in here, December 25th. And we can see that that's the 20th day of the ninth month. But this whole history so far is really expressing that. Everything that we've been going to going through since December 25th, 2021, has been the 20th day of the ninth month. It's the call to repentance. And the question is, are we going to heed it? And, and how long that, that date lasts, I would put it to the end of Colin's prediction. That is, I'm counting from December 25th, when Colin first presented his, his view regarding the presidents of the United States, to the end of his prediction, January 11th, when it ends, that is being the 20th day of the ninth month. It's that period of time. That's the way that I understand it. He started it on December 25th, 2021, but it really doesn't end until uh, January 11th, 2022, 23, right? Now, how many, how many days is that? That would be 365 plus 18. Is that 323 days? Am I doing that right? No, I'm not. Let me think. Yeah, 365. It's 365 plus 18. That's 383, isn't it? Yeah, and then plus the 7 on the other side. So you're saying 390. Yeah, 390. Is, is that significant at all? Really? And notice it's 7 on one side and 18 on the other. Exactly. Okay. Well, you got your 390 with Ezekiel, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's lying on his left side for 390 days. And that represents northern Israel. And is this a prof prophecy regarding northern Israel? Well, is it a, a recognition of northern Israel or is it a recognition of Rome? No, because his his thing is more about. Uh, I know Ezekiel's is. I'm I'm asking if the 390 that we're talking about here. No, this wouldn't be about Rome. This would be about uh, the presidents of the United States, which is Israel. Okay. Right. So, so the 390 days here. Um, that's pretty interesting. So we're counting from December 25th. Yeah, I just I sometimes have a hard time believing that, you know, we're doing things right. Uh, so if I go. No, it's not 390. I don't see. So you went 18. I see what you're doing. So you're adding. Yeah. So I added an extra seven days because you were adding uh, 11 and 7 together to get 18. Right. I added one extra week in there. Yeah. Well, you had said 18 plus 365. Okay. And so that's yeah. what I did. Okay, right. So what we have is 365 plus, yeah, you, you did it right. I did it wrong. So I knew I was doing something wrong there. It didn't add up. Now, this is, is also significant. Uh, so it's 383 days. And 383 days is a length of a year. That's actually technically 384 because we're going to count the 11th day as a complete day. So we're going to count the whole day, we're not just counting, because uh, if you count from the 1st to the 11th, you really count 10 days. 
So we're counting 11 full days, 365 full days. Let me see if I'm doing this right. And um, so we've got, um, so you got December 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31. That's seven days. So yeah, I guess it's 383 days. And that would be a leap year. That's what you call a deficient uh, embolismic year. That is, it's uh, a regular embolismic year is uh, 384, and a complete embolismic year is 385 days. So we got 383 days. So we have a year, prophetically speaking, in which to uh, address this issue in the movement. So, any further thoughts? Because we went a bit over time. No, just uh, just uh, for us to examine it. Examine yeah. It. Yeah. Now I am putting this together in a paper. So, so I'm doing a presentation tomorrow <laughs> afternoon, which I'm going to address material from the book COVID-19: The Great Reset. I'm not going to address the chronology tomorrow afternoon. Um, what time? That's well, two o'clock my time. Okay, that'd be three o'clock my time. Yeah, so two o'clock mountain mountain time, and um, you know, and then Dwight has his presentation tomorrow morning at seven thirty my time, so eight thirty your time. Um, so so we have all of these things that we have to pull together and. I'm finding that this study that I'm doing on the Great Reset and Klaus Schwab and um, the World Economic Forum is very involved. There's lots of things uh, that I'm learning, watching different videos, uh, reading different material. Um, and I want to address, you know, why we're studying it. Now, part of it is just that we have this 2030 date um, and that I was intrigued by that but also because of the pandemic and the symbols of the pandemic and what they mean and how they could relate to the future. So, and I think that's what the movement is trying to do as well. So people in the movement are trying to understand what's happening. Um, and there's a lot of misinformation out there that is what I would call conspiracy theories, that is unprovable assertions things that we could not prove that are happening. But there is a lot of things out there that shows that there is a plan, both for the United States and for the globalists and for the papacy, that are separate plans. That is, they all have their own personal agendas, each of these powers. And, and what we're really going to try to look at as we go through the study, I'm not going to always do it on this chronology, but these things came up this week that I thought were very important. And I will get them down into a paper, in this paper on the 2030. I'm gonna start addressing the chronology there. And, um, and we will see how this all fits together in, in an amazing structure that is witnessing to these powers and what they're attempting to do. And we know that the one power that's going to be in control of, of it all is the papacy but it's going to be using the armies of the United States because the United States builds or makes an image to the beast. And, and this is going to go to Colin's study. You know, in some ways I could have kept this study as being about the presidents of the United States, but we're going to see that Colin's study um, has some important uh, details or insights that we also have to take into account when we're looking at uh, what's happening in this movement and what's going to happen in the future. So, so there's lots of things to look at, but tomorrow I'm going to try to make it simple. We're going to read some material and try to get familiarized with the World Economic Forum and what their plans are for 2030. So.
Any final comments before we close with prayer? Not really. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful uh, for the study of this evening. We know, Lord, that um, we want to have characters that can represent you, that um, in our words, in our actions, and um, in our thoughts, that we can be like Christ and that we can reveal your character to others, that they may be drawn to you. <clears throat> we are thankful for the Sabbath that's coming, for the fellowship that we can have. Um, we ask, we pray for the studies tomorrow, especially for Odilio's study, um, that the light that you want to give us can be clearly seen, and that all of the truths that you have given this movement will be brought together um, in a clear picture we pray for each person. We know the individual struggles. We've been praying for um, people's health. And we know, Lord, that you have been answering prayers. But mostly, Lord, we ask that we can be converted, that we can be forgiven, truly forgiven, and experience the forgiveness that you want to give us, that empowers us and changes us. We pray for those watching these videos that you can give them a clear mind and a clear understanding and um, help us, Lord, to, to recognize um, these things and their importance for us now. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. <clears throat> Recording.